everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird. That's you. You're everyone's favourite bird. Really? You we're playing that game, are we? Hey everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird. Archie! I am so excited because we have a thrift haul today. It's been a long time in the making. I teased you guys a little bit with my thrifting in Japan video a while ago that got so much love and I'm so happy because I adore thrift shopping and part of the reason that I've never really posted about it on my channel is because the way that I see haul videos is that people see stuff and they're looking for stuff to buy and obviously when there's a website and I can list the links to where to buy the stuff then it benefits people and I always thought you know like if I'm thrift shopping that's like a one-off thing and people will see me with it but they're not going to be able to get it themselves because there's no product links or anything like that but there was so much love on that video and people absolutely adored it so I'm really genuinely so excited because thrift shopping is one of my favorite things in the world I mentioned in my other video that before I was on YouTube I would go thrift shopping all the time I would say 90% of my entire wardrobe consisted of thrift store clothes nothing was cohesive nothing matched because everything was just my eclectic random finds and it is a little bit hard to find pastel colored clothes and as a pastel lover myself, I did find it difficult, but that's where thrifting in Japan comes in. In Japan, they do love their pastel clothes. They love their kawaii fashion. And boy, have I got a very, very kawaii haul for you guys today. And today's video is brought to you by Audible. I'm so excited. You might remember my last thrifting video was brought to you by Audible and they've wanted to partner with me again, which is always a great sign. I love when it's such a cool company and they want to continue to support me. If you don't already know, Audible is the incredible audiobook service. I love it, my friends love it. If you know Murakami, you know Murakami? If you're a Tumblr girl, you might know Murakami. Haruki Murakami has been around since the 80s he's been writing books, and Norwegian Wood is one of Murakami's most popular books, especially with Japanese schoolgirls. It follows the story of Toru Watanabe as he looks back on his university days and how he managed the love of two very beautiful and very different women. And hearing about student life in Tokyo in the 60s just fills my heart with joy. <laughs> I would love to be a student in Japan, but because I have my darling Archie, I, I could not leave Australia for an extended period of time. I just couldn't bear to leave him here. So I live vicariously through Murakami's audiobooks on Audible. If you want to pop one on while you're driving, maybe you're cleaning the house, maybe you're on a long flight to Japan like me, it's a great way to pass the time. You can try Audible for yourself. All you have to do if you're in America is text Pretty Pastel to 500 500 or hit the link in my description box below. It's audible.com forward slash Pretty Pastel. You'll get yourself a free audio book plus two Audible originals when you sign up for 30 days. You get to keep the audiobooks that you download and if you do decide to do it I highly recommend a Murakami novel. So like I said if you want to try Audible for yourself text Pretty Pastel to 500 500 or head to the link below it's audible.com slash Pretty Pastel. So with that I'm gonna try and give you guys a little bit more of an idea of my own style in this video. Often when I show you guys clothes I pull them out of the bag and I just kind of pop them on one at a time and stack them all up and I don't really actually show you my proper styling advice so in today's video because it's thrift finds I'm gonna try and give you my styling opinions I've got some interesting basic pieces I've got some really quirky pieces this is a massive haul massive it's not gonna be a quick video so I highly recommend you grab yourself a snack if you haven't already snack. and settle in because it's going to be bless you quite a long one. Now I have the biggest pile in front of me. Come here. Okay so in my other video I showed you guys shopping in the stores so I'm not gonna go over exactly where I got each thing but all of these came from the stores in that other video so check it out if you haven't already. I show you where they are and how you can find them. So first up this is gonna seem very basic but I've got a blue Nike t-shirt. Now this is just a really really basic tee. I love it so much. There's just something so nice about a sporty tee tucked into jeans and then with like a belt and accessorized with hoop earrings and stuff. So that's why I picked this up. I really like the color. I really like the fit. I think it's very very flattering. Next up I could not believe this when I found this. This was only 500 yen, which is about $5. Look at this. This is a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. The design is this kind of like plasticky Mickey Mouse head and the shirt itself is velvet. I know, very exciting. It's exactly the same color as your beak. Isn't that cool? 
Come on. Don't leave me hanging. It's a cool. This is quite a long one, and I definitely think that this paired with some white jeans, there's just something about orange and white paired together that looks so good. Now, the thing about this, this is actually, this is Mickey and Co, and it says Disney Enterprises. So this is a legitimate branded Disney shirt. Five dollars. Unbelievable. Next up, there's a funny story with this one. Now, this is a t-shirt by the brand Chu. I love Chu so much, and it's a, a Korean brand, but it is popular in Japan, and Oh, look at that. I just, I have to warn you guys, you're gonna see this a lot. While I was in Japan, I picked out a week's worth of outfits from this haul, and I wore the clothes around Japan for a week. That video is coming soon. But every single white item somehow got stained with soy sauce. And I'm not joking, and it wasn't deliberate. I'm just cursed. Every single white thing that I wore in that week-long wear test has a soy sauce. Soy sauce. A story store stain. Hopefully that'll come out. But anyway, this is an adorable little cropped tee. And the funny story with this was that when I went to the checkout, it was actually hanging up behind the lady at the checkout. And I said to her in Japanese, I said, oh, excuse me, could I have that shirt, please? And she goes, that one? And I said, yeah, that one. And she goes, no. And I was like, oh, okay. And she was like, do you really want it? And I was like, oh, yeah, it's nice. And she goes, you don't want it. And I said, oh, why not? And she goes, you really don't want it. And I was like, and I thought, am I translating this wrong? Is she telling me that I can't have it? Or that I don't want it? And I, I repeated back to her, I don't want it? And she goes, it's 3,000 yen. And I was like, okay, that's fine. She was like, really? Yes, please. And she takes it down from the hanger and she's just like looking at it and shaking her head and looks at me, shaking her head and looks at the thing again. I don't know whether she just thought, no, you don't want that because it's too expensive. Or what but anyway I got it it's Esther loves too it's absolutely adorable this paired with a skirt this paired with high-waisted jeans it's perfect with anything little baby crop tees are my absolute favorite so this even though it was $30 I didn't mind paying that because Esther loves too is super super cool this one Archie you're not gonna like this look I hate to break it to you you can you take one guess as to why you're not gonna like it it's got cats on it Darkness, my the design actually has little cat heads sort of punched out of like holes I guess you'd say and this was a hundred yen this was a dollar bottles of water cost more than that in Japan one dollar it's so sweet it even has this little bow detail up the top here which is so lovely a plain top like this paired with a, a really nice frilly skirt very Japanese kind of aesthetic Bless you. This next one is so exciting. I couldn't believe when Tiasha actually found this on the rack for me. This is so nice. This is like a sheer sort of turtleneck. It's this really interesting crepey material that stretches. It's a turtleneck like this that frills up at the top. It's got these lovely frilly sleeves like that. So I love layering tops like this. This would look absolutely gorgeous under a, like a black cami style dress. I actually have one from Yes Style that this will be perfect under. It's a little bit too sheer to wear alone, but definitely layering something like this up. I also picked up this because it was purpley, sparkly, lumpy space princess but make it fashion. I loved it. It's got these little sort of frilly details at the bottom. This with some high-waisted pants and a chic little bag and maybe some purple heels would look so great. Or even purple sneakers would look good too. This was one dollar as well. I just, I love when you walk into a thrift store and there's those little buckets that are, everything is one dollar and you pull all the way down through the stuff all the way to the bottom and you find something beautiful that people have missed. So I was so excited when I found this one. Way too cold here at the moment because it is winter but in summer I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this one. This next one at the time I didn't really understand who this was. I saw it on the mannequin as soon as as soon as I walked into the store and I knew I had to have it. Uh, and I've since learned that apparently this is an influencer called Father Kells, apparently. I don't know if this is her official merch. <laughs> Feels a bit weird wearing it now. I don't know, I kind of thought when I saw that picture, I was like, is that Justin Bieber? <laughs> Anyway, this one has a really, really interesting fit. It's got a big slit up the side, so you can wear it tucked in at the front or tucked in at the back, whatever you want to do. Next up is just a really, really simple, I mean, this isn't very exciting, guys. This is just a plain white tee. Again, uh, covered in soy sauce stains. And I got this because I have these really, really bold, loud, loud shorts, and I didn't want to have any sort of crazy loud top with the shorts so I knew that I had to just find like a really really cheap white t-shirt to wear with those shorts and this was 
100 yen, so couldn't go wrong with that. Next up is one of my absolute all-time favorite thrift store finds. I don't know if that's an exaggeration, maybe slightly. This is just so cute, so precious. It's a pink... It's a pink t-shirt and it's got this beautiful ribbon on the front of it here. I knew I had to get this to pair with my white skirts or white jeans. So elegant, dressed up with a pink handbag, some pink accessories even. I love the chunky, chunky ribbon on the front. Next up is a little bit of a weird one. Uh, when I saw it in the store, I thought that it was really, really cool. I think now, looking back, this would be really, really good with biker shorts. This is like an oversized, orange t-shirt. The front of it's meant to be plain. It's just a big plain orange t-shirt. The back has this interesting crisscrossy, very Japanese style design. What I thought was really unusual, and I've actually seen this on a lot of clothes in Japan. Can someone please explain this to me? It has this really strange giant comical looking patch on the side. The patch seems to have all sorts of information about the item itself. I actually saw exactly this on other people's clothes. I was in a train one day and there was a guy standing in front of me. He was wearing a jacket and it had this on it, but it didn't have the same brand. It had a different brand, but it had the same stuff where it said, you know, the style and the material and all that. Is it a trend? Is that a signature of some sort of fashion house? I have no idea. I've never seen that before. I actually don't own any black bike shorts, so I'm just gonna try and put together some sort of interesting outfit for the modeling video. I feel like this is very insta baddie, but make it Naruto. Next up, I freaked out when I saw this in the shop. And I actually have a great screenshot. One of uh, my Twitter followers, Abby Normal, <laughs> literally paused my video when I found this shirt and it's the most glorious screenshot I've ever seen from my channel. Here he is. This is a loaf of bread and it says pan, but it's shaped like a rabbit. And you know what? This may look like something out of a, a cartoon or an anime and it may look like something that couldn't possibly exist. Oh, but it does. If bunny-shaped bread was going to exist anywhere in the world, it would be Japan. So uh, this is indeed something that exists and it's so incredibly cute. I don't even know how I want to style this one. Just tucked into jeans is fine by me. I don't want to wear it underneath anything else because then you cover the design. So tucked into jeans, super casual, little backpack, that's fine. Next up is this incredible frilly blouse. Now, people loved this when they saw it on my Instagram. Admittedly, they only saw it from the back, uh, and there's a reason for that. The reason that they only saw it from the back is because the front has soy sauce stains. I'm cursed. The way that this one goes on, it actually buttons up at the back, so you do need to phone a friend, but you put it on front ways like this, kind of like a straight jacket. But trust me, this tucked in to a brown corduroy skirt being this one that I picked up for 100 yen. It looks so beautiful. I wore this... I wore this to Arishiyama, which is the bamboo grove in Kyoto, and I took some really, really pretty photos. This is almost like kind of Renaissance blouse, but combined with... 60s corduroy. The details on this blouse are so beautiful. The buttons on the back look like pearls. The sleeves have these beautiful laces on them too. The front is so lovely and frilly and let's just ignore the soy sauce stain. Archie, I have something that you're gonna like. Now this was a great find for 100 yen and I had to get it because I thought Archie would like it. Look, are you ready? It's green! <laughs> this was 100 yen. One dollar. One dollar. And it looks like something from the Dolls Kill Delia's collection, I actually have a dress, a green dress with daisies all over it. This is exactly that sort of style, kind of the early 2000s. It's pretty warm, so I didn't get a chance to wear it in Japan, but in Australia at this time of the year, it's perfect for me to wear. Pair it up with some boots, and you can't go wrong for one dollar. Next up is an amazing find. I couldn't believe when I found this. This was so cool. This is from the brand Chu again. And it's funny because I actually went over there to Japan hoping to find this, but I was actually gonna go to Wego Loves Chu, which is the store in Harajuku that sells it, but I found it in a thrift store for a quarter of the price. This is a little blue sweater like this, and it's got little love heart cutouts in the front here. Now, yes, my uh, American subscribers, I know you hate it when I say love heart. That's what they are, they're love hearts. They're not beating hearts in your chest, they're love hearts. Wearing something blue like this, tucked into a skirt, and then even with a little coat over the top, perfect for me here in the Australian winter. You never find beautiful pastel colored things like this back home, so I, of course I was gonna find it in Japan. If I was gonna find an adorable love heart cutout sweater in a pastel color, it was going to be in Japan. Next up, 
I'm so happy, but also very, very, very disappointed in myself. Yet again, the soy sauce has struck, uh, but this one definitely got the worst of it. I swear, guys, I'm not a messy eater. I'm not a messy eater. I don't know how this happens. It doesn't happen with any other colored piece of clothing, ever. I can wear pink and blue and yellow, green, anything and I won't get soy sauce stains on it, but for some reason, as soon as I wear white, that happens. This is incredible. This is a really proper retro sports jacket with these pastel panels on here. People were telling me that it looks like vintage Try Guys merch, apparently. Now, now the brand here, it actually says Oshman's Sportswear. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research and find out about this brand because I wanna know what year that this was made. This is part of the reason that I adore thrift shopping because you find these things that haven't been made in decades and obviously the pastel aesthetic was alive and well what, maybe like a good 30 years ago or more. I think that I need to find more clothes from that era because that's where you find all this sort of stuff. This is absolutely incredible. It's probably one of my favorite thrifted pieces of all time. A good windbreaker jacket pairs well with so many different looks, especially with a tennis skirt. That's very Korean. They love to pair tennis skirts and sneakers with windbreaker jackets. So I adore this one so much. It's probably my favorite thing. This next one is so funny. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny because this is incredible. This is a big pink sweater that's got giant 3D cherries on it. They're massive dangly balls that I you know, need to stop right there. This is by the brand Chew again. A Chew, yes. See, what did I say? No soy sauce stains. I wore this a lot. No soy sauce stains. But I'll tell you something funny that did happen when I was wearing this. I uh, got really, really warm because it, it was summer in Japan and as much as I wanted to wear this because of how cute it was, it just wasn't practical with the weather. But me being as stubborn as I am, I would wear it out in the morning and get 20 minutes into my day and be like, oh my God, it's too hot, I have to take it off. And I tied it around my waist without really thinking about the fact that the giant cherries were so huge and I tied it backwards. So it really just looked like I had a huge, <laughs> Booty. Okay, let's have a look at some more skirts. Now I showed you the corduroy one. I also picked up this denim one. This was a little bit expensive from memory. I think that this may have been like 15 to $20, which for a denim skirt, when you're getting it secondhand, I have seen the denim skirts in thrift stores for a lot cheaper than that. But there was just something so flattering about the way that this one fit. It was a really, really good length for me and it cinched in well at the waist. It's kind of difficult to get the right fit for a denim skirt, but this one was perfect. Denim skirts pair so well with button up shirts, crop tops, baby tees, sweaters, can't go wrong with a good denim skirt. So when I found that one and the fit was perfect, I knew that I had to have it. This next one, this is kind of like the retro sports jacket that I showed you before. This is definitely retro. Looking at it, you know that it's from another era. This is a beautiful, beautiful skirt. It's a little tiny bit long. I do think that for 2019, it's a little bit too long. If it was going to be a long skirt, I'd want it to come down a little bit further. I find that this length is a little bit awkward and just kind of in between. So I may shorten it, but because it's so lovely and such a unique piece, I don't want to ruin it. So I might see if there's some way that I can tuck it up, make it a bit shorter without actually having to sew it or, or cut it, because I think it is such a waste to have something so beautiful and then alter it permanently from its original form. Next up is this button up shirt, which gives me major, major farmer wants a wife vibes. Now, the funny thing was that when I was wearing this in uh, Osaka, we went into a bar, there was a guy in the bar wearing this shirt and we got the most amazing photo, it wasn't even planned. He had his back to me, he was facing the bar and I was facing Tiasha and I gave him my phone and I was like, can you take a photo of me and just sort of get him over my shoulder so you could see his back and she's like, okay. And she went to take the photo and he turned around and then he photo bombed the photo, <laughs> like purposefully, he's like, I love this shirt. I think it's really, really cute. The color combination is perfect and it's very well made too. Another button up shirt that was such a good find was this one. This is really, really sweet. It's a very sheer little button up shirt. Now it's got short sleeves and I'm not always such a fan of short sleeves on button up shirts, but this one definitely, definitely gets a pass from me. It's got this adorable pink pocket on it here. The color combination of pink, blue and white is amazing. I don't how I feel about the little brown love hearts. I feel like if they had been 
maybe purple or something. I would have liked it a fair bit more, but it's still adorable. I also had great luck with pants on this trip and these shorts, these are the ones I was talking about earlier. Now these are Lacoste and I had a huge dilemma when I was buying these because these were, I think maybe 30 or even $40. They are sort of teetering on the edge of dad going to golf. You know, if you tuck your white socks up high enough, it's definitely a very, very dad aesthetic. I felt like I had to get these to work with them. These are so well made. I'm assuming they're vintage, but you know what? They could literally be from 2019 and I wouldn't know. But just looking at them, they do look like they're vintage. <laughs> these next pants, these are some of my favorite pants that I've ever got. These are a beautiful color combination because it's like, it's got blue and green and a little hint of pink, maybe even some purple in there too. These high-waisted pants are beautiful. They have this lovely pocket on the back. I really love the way that it cinches in and then sort of flares up a little bit over the waist. They're a really, really nice length too. I wore these around with chunky sneakers and I got a lot of compliments, a lot of people that saw pictures of these and a lot of people that I bumped into in the streets. I saw a lot of subscribers while I was in Japan and people were always like, your pants are so cool. Where'd you get them? And I'm like, well, they're thrifted. See, this is again why I was always like, people don't want thrift videos because they're gonna love the stuff, but then they can't buy it and all they're gonna feel is jealous. That's what these pants do. They just, they make you jealous that you're never gonna find them. They're not for you, they're for me. Not for you, for me. I also picked up some tall, long jeans, which is unusual to find in Japan because, you know, normally the jeans are a little bit shorter. They're a really nice light colored denim. In the store, I liked them a bit more than I like them now. I feel like I really have to play around with the styling of these. I think with some booties, maybe a turtleneck, these will be fine. I just have to really work with them. I don't know what I was thinking. I think when I saw them in the store, I thought they were like 2000s style internet girl jeans, but they're kind of almost in between dad jeans and mum jeans. It's a very unusual combination, but I was just really, really overwhelmed and happy that I found long, long jeans in Japan. These next pants, oh, these are so good. These remind me of pants that Yes Style has given me before. They're again, high-waisted. They have really, really boxy legs. They're like a checkered print. You can get so many different looks out of these sort of basic trousers, whether you wear a turtleneck or a button-up shirt or a crop top. And depending on what shoes that you wear, you can really change the look of these entirely. These are a little bit expensive. I think from memory they were maybe like $25 or $30, which again, when, when I'm talking about thrifting, because you can find stuff for a dollar or $5, I thought that it was a little bit much, but I couldn't say no to them because they've got buttons all the way up instead of a zip, which I really, really like. And as long as you don't go chewing the buttons off, thank you very much. I picked up overalls. I didn't think that I'd be able to find any overalls. And also when you're working with white overalls, it's a fine line between ow, ow, ow a painter and fashion, but you can make it work somewhere in between. These fit in a really unusual way. They have really, really long straps and there's a big opening at the side. So you gotta be kind of careful what you wear on the side. It's got this lovely big pocket in the front and the length of the pants is pretty good for me. I was a little bit worried that when I put them on, the body would be a little bit too short for my torso, but luckily it did fit. And I also picked up these. These are so cute. Living out my best farm girl life. I don't know what color would you call that? It's kind of like a, a bluish gray. They've got, yes, they've got these big buttons at the top here, big old buttons. They cinch up at the waist. The legs aren't very long, but they are very, very wide. They're very boxy legs. It's just a really casual look for heading down to the shops, grab your little shopping basket, go do some shopping. They're beautiful. The next category is dresses. This first one reminded me of some dresses that I've been given by Yes Style. This is a lacy polka dot dress. Now, definitely have to wear a cami under this. I don't think that you can wear it with nothing underneath. Guess it depends on the context, really. But uh, I just thought it was so beautiful and elegant and I love the dusty pink. This can go from night to day very easily with just a switch of your accessories. I also picked up this, which I showed on Instagram and people loved it. This is a really beautiful summery dress. It's got little straps here that tie up at the top. It's got these pom-poms at the bottom, which are not edible. I wore this paired with chunky sneakers, but you can definitely pair it with high heels. You can make it very, very summery paired with a summer hat, or you can even make it a, a winter fashion piece too, if you layer it up properly. Speaking of layering, I have the most insane outfit ever that I stripped off a mannequin. This was by far the most expensive thing that I bought while thrifting. This dress on its own, I think was $80. This was an antique dress. They, they had antique written on it. by a brand that says Nadine, and the tags are old and yellow. I have no idea how old this dress is. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you'd clarify as an antique. I mean, I would think something that's an antique would be a 
a couple of hundred years old, so maybe I would say this is more vintage than antique, but this dress is glorious. It's this huge lacy blue dress. Now, wearing it on its own is absolutely stunning as a summer dress, but what I did was I layered it. Now, they had it layered with this corset, which was a beautiful corset. I think it was a bit expensive. I think it was about $40, but it's a very tight corset. And they also had this beautiful negligee kind of nightgown paired with it over the top and this huge pearl necklace as well. So I, I took the whole outfit because I just thought it was the most beautiful jaw-dropping outfit I've ever seen. And I wore it as part of my week-long wear test. I wore it to the island of Naoshima, which is actually Japan's art island. And I figured this outfit was a, a, a masterpiece on its own. So that's why I had to wear it on the art island and become a piece of artwork myself. This necklace was maybe like $15 or so. I don't think they're real pearls, but they do look stunning. And then last but not least, we have from the thumbnail of my thrift shopping video, the bodyline Lolita kind of dress. It's not exactly Lolita, it's verging on Lolita. It's a three-piece little number, so it comes with a dress like this, which has this black and white bottom on it, it's got a little bow, and then a halter neck, but then it also came with this, like, overshirt. This is very Sophia Nygaard. It's got double-breasted buttons at the front, and then this lacy detail at the back, and then these huge sleeves like this. And then it also has a bib. This little bib thing like this. What do you think, Archie? Is this, this is Archie size, is it? Is this an Archie dress? Now, as you can see, this one is pretty wearable. Just an everyday sort of look. You know, you can wear it to work, you can wear it to the shops, you can wear it to a funeral or a birthday party. I'm kidding. I don't know where I'm going to be able to wear this, but it's from Bodyline, and Bodyline is a super cool store. I could happily wear this in Japan. It's quite normal to see girls walking around in clothes like this in Japan, and no one even looks twice, no one cares. I feel like in Australia I might get some funny looks. I would love to do like a week-long ah. challenge where I wear Harajuku style clothes for a week. Maybe we'll do that. Leave a comment below if you want to see that. But this dress, I think in total, maybe it was like $40 or $50, which I have actually been told by people, apparently that's about what I would have paid for at full price in Bodyline. I didn't know that. I thought I was getting the bargain of the century because it's so interesting and unusual. Moving on to accessories now. I have something else that Archie's going to really, really hate. Can you get any guesses, Archie? It's a cat bag! <laughs> no, 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 we don't, we don't attack the cat. No, 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 no. Okay, we, we attack the cat, do we? Right? I screamed when I saw this cat handbag. It's huge, it's a little bit shiny, it carries so much stuff. I actually used this as my carry-on luggage on my way back to Australia. Hey, you guys, you go play over there. It may not be a cat, but this next bag is furry, and look at this. If this isn't the most... <laughs> doll's kill bag you've ever seen. It's got like a, a clear plastic pocket so you can put your pretty pastel pins in there. If you haven't bought our merch, definitely check it out. This bag is massive. This can fit my laptop. It can fit me. I couldn't believe when I found this one. I thought it was the most awesome thing I've ever seen. It was a little bit expensive. But definitely worth it. I also picked up a cap. Now I wore this in my week-long wear test. Just a plain pink cap. I have a couple of these. I have one with a peach on it and one with Hello Kitty on it. But this is just a plain one. Actually, no, it does say something. It says ca Candy K. There's heaps of accessories in thrift stores in Japan, as there are in thrift stores all over the world. I didn't pick up too many, but I got this really, really long silver necklace. I got this because it was on the mannequin and it completed one of the outfits that I wore for the week-long wear test. This was cheap. It was only like 2 or $3. I also got this, which some people think is an abomination, but I think it's wonderful. This is a Barney shopping bag. I mean, it was $2 and I've never seen a Barney shopping bag. There was an equal amount of comments saying, holy crap, I need that bag. Where did you get it? Uh, compared to, good lord, is that a Barney bag? <laughs> How old are you? I also picked up this crazy handbag that's shaped like lips. Look, I'm Jaclyn Hill. It came with a chain, but you can also just use it as a clutch if you like. I actually think I'm just gonna use this as a prop because I can't really imagine how I'm gonna style this. I mean, maybe with like some motorbike kind of chic might look cool with black and red, but I think this will look cool in the beauty room. I can store some stuff in it. This was really cheap. It was like five or $10. Oh, and I forgot to show you this. I bought this cute little hat. It's a little clip on hat. It's got these little tiny clips on the back of it. And oh no, one of them just broke. <laughs> 
funny! But anyway, you're just supposed to like wear it on the side of your head like that. So I got this to pair with the black Lolita style dress. Okay, now we're moving on to the shoes, which is probably the most exciting thing because it's very, very difficult for me to find shoes in Japan. There's nothing my size because I have monstrous Western feet and the lovely ladies in Japan only seem to have feet that go up to about a size eight and my monster size 10 feet don't fit anything. But life hack, if you shop in the men's section and men in Japan are very stylish, you can find shoes big enough for your feet. And would you look at what I found? Pineapple Converse. Oh, who owns those pineapple Converse shoes? Pretty. Tea pastel! I couldn't believe it. I don't own Converse. It's been a long time since I owned Converse. And now I own Pineapple Converse. <laughs> I also picked up these. These are vintage, I think they're vintage Nikes. Now the only thing that I don't like about these is the brown laces and that they're brown on the inside here. Now I can easily replace the laces, but I just love the color block. It's so cool. I also picked up these high heels. These were quite cheap too. They're so beautiful. And then my favorite of all, I picked up these. These are like military style boots. Now they were super cheap because they're a little bit dirty, but they have this big gold buckle zip here. They're very heavy though. A bit of a pain to carry back to Australia, but totally worth it. So that's it guys. That's everything. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope that you liked some of my styling advice. <laughs> okay, right. If you like these thrift videos, please let me know because thrifting fills my soul with joy. It's so much fun. So uh, if you want to see more, don't forget to keep an eye out for the I wore thrift clothes in Japan for a week because that was so much fun. I also tried to make it a little bit more travel-y as well. I show you a bit of Japan in that video. We did some really interesting things every day. So subscribe if you haven't already. Keep an eye out for that video. You can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Pretty Pastel Please. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when our next videos are coming out. We have so many that we filmed in Japan that I'm so excited to share with you guys. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!